Уважаемые коллеги, начинаем нашу э, секцию э, «Запад». И э, первый докладчик э, – Хельмут э, Сакс из э, Германии. Э, доклад э, э, Сакс является главным врачом городской клиники э, городской больницы города Дрездена, э, предприятия Близкая больница э, университета Дрездена. Доклад «Зрительные функции и хирургические результаты имплантации с обретенами чип чипа альфа у 26 слепых пациентов с пигментом ретинита. Пожалуйста. Доброе утро. Спасибо very much. Thank you very much for inviting me here uh, for this conference. A special thanks to Jesse Vickoff. Um, I'm here for the second time. When I was here for the first time, I was talking about surgery. This time I will be talking about the results from this project where I'm working for 20 years now and we try to get uh, blind people into a situation where they can see again with these electronic devices with these separate energies. Uh, principally, uh, if you want to have, um, uh, if you want to give visual information into the visual system, there are a few places that you can use. The best place to use is the retina. Very but, uh, chances to come from the surface of the retina or from the uh, subretinal space. The group where I'm working works from the subretinal space. So, so that's what you see here. The chip is in the subretinal space and uh, the implantation is a bit tricky. Here you see the chip when it's implanted, but it has some advantages. Uh, the photodiodes correspond to the retinal topic correct localization, so there is no learning process. Uh, you reduce the remaining retinal network, uh, the fixation of the chip is very easy to say, and uh, the eye movements can be used. This is uh, uh, in contrast to the epiretinal project. So you have no visible parts of the uh, implant outside the body, and uh, you can use this uh, uh, implantation situation in retinal degenerations, not in uh, other types of blindness that you can see. If you have retinal scarring, then you cannot use this type of, uh, um, of retinal procedures. So, uh, when you do this kind of uh, um, thing, then you need a lot of energy to stimulate the retina. And the energy has to come from outside. So you need some cable going outside the eye uh, to some place where you can get energy into the system. And I will show you uh, in the next slide how this works. This was our first implant that we are using in uh, humans. Here you see the subretinal chip, and that's the part which is beneath the retina. And then there comes the part which is onto the sclera, and then a cable going through the orbit, and there beneath the skin, until a retroauricular region where the cable was coming out in the first part. Uh, and this chip has about 1,500 photodiodes, so we have a lot of pixels to get some information uh, from the object you see. The new implants that we are using nowadays has not the plug coming outside the skin, uh, it has a transdermal uh, energy, um, energy transmitter system, and that's how it, uh, you see it on the X-ray. It's the same implant that you see before, and this is how the patient looks like when they use using the system. So we did uh, the first part of our study uh, until 2008, monocentric in Tübingen. I was working there in Tübingen with the group, and uh, from um, 2009 and 10, uh, we opened the study, and we have now the main study, module one and module two, uh, with different sites in all over the world and about 40 uh, blind patients which are in front. I will now be talking about uh, some 26 patients uh, in this main study uh, and show you the uh, visual results of them. Uh, the surgical procedure that I was talking the last time, uh, we can say that that's successful, it can be done without uh, a lot of problems. So this is the current state of the study. You see we are now uh, multicentric, but only two centers so far are implanted are implanting now because we are changing um, the implant right now. And these are the two centers, Dresden and Tübingen, uh, which have most of the experience with implantation. I developed a strategy and I was doing a lot of work in Tübingen. So uh, at the moment we are uh, a bit uh, in with uh, these two sites, but uh, when we have a bit more information
we can we get into this different sites. That's the, uh, the strategy for the implantation. You have to make a refractory. Then in the refractory, you create a lab. Uh, you uh, lab the the retina. And then you do something like a glaucoma surgery from outside. And when you go through the chloride without any bleeding into the subretinal lab, and then you advance the ship right uh, to the position you want it to have. And that's the final situation. And uh, it's, uh, you want to have the chip beneath the uh, phobia, uh, but this is not always possible because the retinal situation in our patients is very different. Sometimes there are retinal regions where you don't want to be. So there are different uh, types of uh, locations. You can get central, you can get on the margin or here uh, on the corner of the chip, or you can get paraphobia. But basically it's not uh, difficult to get it into the central position. It depends how good the retina is there. That's how you uh, see uh, the implant uh, two weeks after implantation. Um, this is the old type of implant. You see additional direct stimulating electrodes there. We learned a lot from them in the first part of the study. But uh, to compare this, we had to develop tests, and uh, that's what you see here. Uh, we test for uh, very um, simple things like light detection, basic temporal resolution, object location, movement detection. And uh, then we have uh, another set of new tests with great vision and general series, uh, and then most activities of daily living and patient self-reporting are very interesting for us. So, uh, let's go to the basic functions. This is here, 26 patients, uh, no four patients, no perception. Here you see problems. Uh, here you see the problems. There was one optic nerve problem. This was a patient with um, um, very uh, strong nystagmus, and uh, this one had a retinal swelling after reposition. This was very difficult surgery. This uh, uh, one done in Hong Kong had vascular problems, and this one in Singapore had problems. So we don't look to that, we, don't, we look to this, which shows the performance of the retina in the chip. So, next, light source location. From this point of view, you have uh, 15 yes. Seven with no, and this four as I explained before. Rating accuracy, it gets more difficult. 40 yes, eight no. Motion for perception, more difficult. Six yes, 16 no. Lendol searing, one of the difficult tasks. Four yes, 18 no. So, the other uh, tested tasks, uh, gray scales, interestingly. Gray scales are obviously easier to recognize. Uh, and then we have a set of uh, something which the patient knows is it's the, uh, it's the drug he has to uh, detect. And here is a uh, five, five yes, seven no, and detecting letters back again a difficult task, only four patients. What means detecting of letters? That's what we see right here. That's about the size of letters of patient who is a really good patient can detect with such a system. And uh, of course you have to get that into an, um, a scientific uh, uh, setup. So we uh, test them with different shapes. They have to say how many shapes there are, where they, where they are, and they have to name the shapes. And then we go for um, different uh, things they, they know from their daily life. And uh, I show you, look, uh, the video is running now, a video which shows you a bit what it means for the patient. So can we start the video, please? Do you see the patient? Uh, uh, usually it has a, an audio, but uh, this sometimes doesn't work. The patient sees the plate, the patient sees uh, um, 
they seize the spoon, seize the knife and the mug, and he can describe it. And in coordination task, uh, this lady sees the glass in, in daily life and she can grab the glass. She has been blind for uh, some years until uh, she had this implant. You see how she grabs the glass. And motion detection, um, he describes how uh, he sees cars which were running by. He can clearly detect the light, things like that. So uh, it is quite impressive for these patients. So, but I think uh, when the audio is not running, we, we can speak that. Here, once again, motion detection. Okay, then we go back to the... Yes.
Спасибо большое. Очень интересное сообщение. Уважаемые коллеги, как, как, как мы будем распределять нашу работу? Будем сразу же задавать вопросы или в письменном виде? Какие будут предложения? Может быть, уже сейчас возникли вопросы? Yes. I have a question. Perhaps I did not uh, really uh, understand something. Which is the structure the chip is connected to? So when, to which structure does the chip give the information to the um, uh, uh, optic nerve or to the retina? You need a healthy retina for that. Healthy means that the photoreceptor has degenerated and the ganglion cells, they really stay alive for a lot of years. There are some histology and uh, we have implanted patients which have been 10 years blind uh, from retinal degeneration and you can still use the system above this, uh, this photoreceptor. And that's where you, uh, where you get the information in, whether you come from the surface, like epiretinal or subretinal, it's always the same target structure. Okay, so it's the nerve fiber layer thing. Uh, it's, it's the cell layer, it's not okay. the layer. you get through okay. And the uh, second question, if I'm allowed. Uh, uh, what is the reason for the aging of the implants, uh, that they don't work anymore? Uh, this is a very tricky thing, uh, because to get the information very uh, close to the target, you have to expose the electrode. And uh, the chip is like a real working computer. There is a lot of electronics beneath this electrode. And uh, when you try to coat the, um, uh, the electrode, you always have uh, this part where, the, where it's open. It's like, in, uh, um, like when you have uh, plumbage to your teeth. You always get uh, here your problems. And macrophages, macrophages and uh, other fluids can degrade the, the function of the chip and that's the uh, way we have to work add additional passivation so that the chip lasts longer. So it's an isolation problem of the electrons? Yes. Спасибо большое. Уважаемые коллеги, если будут вопросы, пожалуйста, в письменном виде тогда передавайте. Мы переходим к следующему докладу.